Uh, ooh. Uh, thank you for inviting me to speak here against, uh, alongside some really, really proper people. I'm, I don't know if I'm really a proper person. I'm not really sure I should be here. But as way of appreciation, uh, I am going to do what I do best today, which is rant. So <laughs> I've prepared a brilliant rant for you, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, so technology companies are absolutely in love with the idea of disruption of turning things on their head. It's kind of the new, you know you're always told, think outside the box. This is the new think outside the box. Disrupt things, subvert everything. Um, it's it's kind of like the new sexy thing. But have they taken this too far? And are they actually currently subverting the whole very idea of the word good? First of all, what do we mean by good? Well, by good, I mean social good. I don't mean good at what you do, or you've been a good girl today. And I wonder who in this room interpreted good in the same way that I meant it. And I wonder this because of my day job. So I work in an organisation called Reason Digital. And our slogan, until very recently, has been do a little good with digital. But unfortunately, and, and this worked really well for eight years. It, it, you know, it, did what it, it did what it said on the tin. Um, and what, what the tin is, what we mean by good, is that we work with other pro-social organisations that are doing good in the technology world, good in the social good sense. So we're making apps that help keep sex workers safe, or we're working on apps that help men talk more about their mental health. Um, we might be working with corporate social responsibility departments to help them increase the amount of social good that an organisation is doing. That's what we mean by a little good. And until a few years ago, that was fine. But more recently, people have been questioning that terminology. They don't seem to kind of get good in the same way that they used to. Are we using the right kind of words to describe ourselves anymore? We're not sure. And it's interesting to me, why? Why has this changed? What's different? So the first thing I do, like any good researcher, was trying to define the problem. So I literally went and looked up the definition of good. And the weird thing I found was 50 different definitions of what good meant. 50. All slightly different. So I think we can already see that the concept of good, the whole idea of good, is a complicated notion. Everybody will define good differently in this room. Your own bar of what you mean by good will be different. Based on your world view, based on uh, irrationalities that humans... Humans are so irrational, don't even try and pretend that you're not, because you are and all those cognitive bias things going on in our heads. So how, how can we kind of like look at this? Well, I, I'm going to kind of just talk about my personal view of good. Um, I know Jackie's still here. So this is one. Uh, this, is, this is my bay. <coughs> I mean, my bike. Um, one of three. Uh, she's lovely. I shouldn't have favourites. But, um, and I think that riding my bike everywhere instead of having a car is, is a good thing for me to do. I think that not eating meat, hey, vegetarian cyclists, um, I think <laughs> eat, not eating meat is a really good thing to do. Uh, for some strange reason, uh, this is one of four cats I have living in my house. I think that's a good thing to do. Uh, I say cats, I mean fluffy idiots that just happen to walk around my house tripping me up, eating all my stuff. Uh, because they have nowhere else to live. Uh, I see a cat with no home and I just can't help it. I think that's a good thing to do, right? That's what I tell myself anyway. Really, I just collect cats. Maybe collecting things is, is what I think. I don't know. Uh, I also really, really value the idea that I can question things against my values. I can question the government when I think it's not doing the right thing. That's a really, really, really important thing to me. I even helped run a small political party. Um, that's how far I really believed in those values. Society is important to me. Environment is important to me. Looking after fluffy Creatures is important to me, and this is my framing of good. This is why I think I'm good doing these things. But then if we think of another person, let's, let's just make, make an imaginary person up. And this person's values revolve around a st stable government. They really believe in our government. They think that the government's doing good things. And they believe in the laws that that government sets in place. Why wouldn't they believe that, right? That's their, that's their level of good. So for me to go around challenging that, they don't think I'm being very good. And when I'm riding my bike round at maybe half a mile an hour around the city centre, blocking up the traffic, they might be one of the guys sat in the traffic thinking, oh, you are blocking me. And they don't think I'm good. In fact, they might actually think I'm being a bit of a dick. 
Also, protests, if anybody reads the news, as, as safe and happy and peaceful that your protest might be, you very well might just get put in jail. And if I get put in jail for doing a protest, um, surely being in jail is the very epitome of not being good. Yet I've been put in jail for doing something that I believe is good. So it's complicated, right? But also, not only is it complicated for each individual, it's, we've got to kind of look at our framing in culture. And we're currently in kind of a neoliberalist era, and everything's about profit. Good equals profit, good equals the ability to make profit, and good equals the ability to consume stuff. That's our general world framing at the minute. We need to take that into account as well. At Reason Digital, we know all too well that good is complicated. We deal in, compl in, in good. Our whole business is about good. So we have projects knocking on our door every day, and we have to decide whether to take that project on or not. We don't have any real set framework in which to do this with. We just run it by our company values. And you know what? A lot of it's gut feel as well. But you can also you can simplify it. I'm going to take you through that. But first, I want to share with you two things that we do run it by. Will this project make rich people richer? If that's a yes, then what's the point? Loads of other people are already doing that. And we would really, really love to piss off the Daily Mail. <laughs> But we can simplify this. So I'm going to just do a little exercise in the room now on how we can all come to some sort of middle ground of what we believe good is. So I'm going to run through a load of organisations. Imagine your reason digital. I know you don't know our visions or values. It doesn't matter. You know that we work with people who do good. So are these organisations good or bad? Good. Yeah, I like this. This works. <laughs> good hospice. Yay, good. Yay. Boo, gambling. Boo. No, we don't like these. I don't think anybody in the room would say that they like cruelty to children, right? So, yeah. <laughs> Nestle, mm, boo. Yeah, if you know what they've been up to. Naughty, naughty. Enron, boo, baddies. These are the bad guys. Uh, Turing Pharmaceuticals. Don't know if anybody knows who this guy is, but he's a right twit. So we all have the same thoughts then, basically, on what was good and bad in this room. So we've come to kind of like this middle ground of what we know good is. So we've defined good now for the purposes of this talk. Uh, so I want to move on to the first bit that I really want to talk about today. Um, so we're moving into, well, a lot of people think that we're moving into this kind of post-capitalist era. Um, and I, for one, kind of agree with that based on my experiences. So I've worked in the tech industry for 10 years now, and I've seen more and more organisations setting up that really want to do some social good. And that's really encouraging. I've also lectured for five years, and every year there's more and more students interested in the ethics behind what they're doing. We've also recently conducted a, a research study on how young people give to charity. And I know they get a bad rep, you know, the youth hanging out on street corners. But you know what? They give more to charity than anyone else, or they want to, despite the fact that they don't have as much money as other generations previously. So, yeah, youth, go you. Uh, I wish I was as cool as those guys. That's why I put good trainers on today. Um, <laughs> so, back to post-capitalism. Also, look at other things. So, the political centre is starting to move towards the left. And this happens. There's always a backlash against the current system. And we're currently maybe potentially moving into that kind of backlash place. Um, more countries are looking at or have already implemented a universal basic income. W money's going to become less important. Robots are taking all our jobs. Things are going to have to change. And things can't keep revolving around money. Like Star Trek. That's the relevance to the picture. There's no cash in Star Trek. People just work because they want to. Who wouldn't want to work on a spaceship? <laughs> but it isn't just me that's noticed this. It's also corporations and organisations, and they are using this to market to us. Now, this kind of marketing isn't new. Manipulative marketing practices have been around for a long time, such as greenwashing. So greenwashing is where people pretend to be really eco-friendly when they're not. And in fact, they might be the exact opposite of being eco-friendly. So really famous wh white wh uh, green washers are BP, Body Shop, and it's been around for ages. Also, we could really go down a rabbit hole here. I could really just totally lose you and say that any sort of marketing, advertising, or branding is totally evil and manipulative. Think about Naomi Klein's No Logo, if anybody's read that anti-branding book. And it makes a lot of sense, and almost every designer has a copy of it. Or we could think about the comedian Bill Hicks and his really famous quote um, against advertising. But I'm not going to go there. So 
Manipulative marketing techniques been around for ages, but it seems to be getting worse. I feel like the things Silicon Valley are saying about themselves, you would have thought that all the world's problems would be fixed by now. It feels like every day there's a new organization, a new startup that says they're going to change the world or fix something. And it can't just be me that here's this kind of language and it's usually kind of got emotive pictures and slow music going over it as well. And it can't just be me that he hears this and sees this and thinks that the things they're doing are amazing, world-changing shit like solving world poverty or creating world peace, you know? But they're not doing that. I mean, they're kind of changing the world, maybe for other rich people, and they're making those rich people richer. But what they're actually doing is just creating apps that send the word yo to their friends. Oh, this one's, this one's brilliant. So when you've been shopping and you've parked your car in a parking space and you finish shopping, get back to your car, you could use this app to sell that parking space to somebody else. This is a busy parking area. I mean, like, I don't drive, but that's a dick move, right? <laughs> Something else that annoys me, and there are a lot of things, but this is relevant is the sharing economy. Now, I don't know if anybody's heard this terminology, the sharing economy. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? Airbnb and Uber, they're the sharing economy. Oh, that's so beautiful. But I think the person that coined this phrase has no idea what the word sharing means. When you get an Airbnb, you don't share somebody's house, you pay for it. That's not really sharing. That's like getting a chocolate bar, giving half to your mate, they eat it, and then saying, you owe me a pound. That's selling half a chocolate bar. <coughs> so sharing economy really annoys me. The real sharing economy is the creative commons, is open source technology. That is real sharing, where no money crosses hands, everybody does everything because they're lovely. And piracy. It gets a really bad rep, just like the youth. But actually, in another frame of mind, where it wasn't all about money, piracy has increased knowledge sharing. It's increased culture sharing. And people are more open and have more ideas because of it. But because of the framing of money, and we all need to make money, it has been demonized. So are these organizations doing good? No, I think they're doing good. And actually, if we think about it, Maybe they're kind of bad. There's an argument to say that people are selling their houses, selling their cars, selling their time, selling their bodies, because they can't afford to do anything else. And these apps are enabling them to do it, but a really minimum wage. I mean, just think of Uber and how it's just really not very good at safety and how it's got less than minimum wage for everybody that works for it. Think about Airbnb, and again, really bad things going on with safety there. And actually, they might be contributing to the housing crisis. Remember when Facebook did that experiment where they tried to make us all sad? If you don't remember that, they did. And they just did it to see what happened. That's not very nice, selling all our data. And my personal favorite, is when Google was actually so evil, it had to drop its slogan of don't be evil. So what, Bex? So what? What do you rant about? What is going on here? Well, I'm pissed off, quite obviously. I'm really annoyed because I have to think of a new slogan for the organization I work for now because no one understands what good is anymore. Because you all think good is just getting a quicker taxi somewhere. No, it's not. I'm annoyed. And all these organizations are just making more money off the back of rhetoric that charities should be using. People who are actually doing good. And there's no other word. You can't say, oh, well, OK, if good is now getting a quicker taxi, then we're gooder. -er. There isn't another word. So you're stealing it from us, and it's not fair. It makes me sad. Also, if we look at the flip side of things, organizations are quite happily stealing this kind of these words and this language from charities, and they don't seem to mind. But if a charity was to take a more commercial view, and if they were to do um, an advert, it cost them £100,000, everybody would be up in arms saying, no, don't do that. You know, spend it on your service users. Why are you spending it on an advert? The same reason Cadbury's would spend £100,000 on an advert to make more money. Except for, in this instance, it's going back to the service users. But they're not allowed. So there's this, there, are, there are companies doing good. There are a lot of tech companies doing good. But they, they're being really humble about it because of this kind of whole thing that's been going on. 
Examples of organisations that are doing good, the Nominet Trust, the UK's leading social tech funder. The UK's leading social tech funder. From that, would you imagine that what they're doing at their very core is making Braille easier to read? It's funding projects that are making people's lives better, that are potentially saving lives. You would not guess this from the UK's leading social tech funder. Another one, Furphone, building a phone to create a fairer economy. Don't mention economy and marketing, nobody cares about the economy. Boring. Again, you would not guess that what Fairphone were actually doing is changing the entire consumer technology department for everybody involved in that process from end to end. Their mining is actually saving the world. And their fur kind of wages for all of their factory workers mean that there aren't suicide nets like Apple's factories because they can live a life with the wages that they earn. And the product that they make, it's a phone that lasts five years, not two, not one. So it's allowing you to make the choice to get out of that consumer technology chain. And back to us, Reason Digital, doing a little good with digital. We even said little, we even said little, we're doing a little bit, oh, I suppose we're doing a little bit. There's 40 of us, we've been around for eight years. We work full time on social good projects. We're saving lives, doing a little good with digital, whatever. What now? Well, the cynical Bex, which maybe you might have noticed is my predominant personality, the cynical Bex really worries that we're talking about doing good all the time and changing the world, and people are going to get really, really dumbed down by, by these words. They're not going to really, it's not going to have the impact it used to. Charities are going to really struggle to market themselves, and I'm really worried. I am. I'm really, really worried about what's going on. I've had conversations where people don't understand the whole concept of doing good. But the positive Bex, the positive Bex really hopes that the reasons for all of this is because we're changing as a society and we're becoming more conscientious and they have to market to us in this way because this is how we want to be marketed to. Maybe it's the start of real change. Maybe they're going to have to stop talking about doing good soon and actually do some good. Maybe it isn't that tech's subverting good. Maybe good is subverting tech. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>